But for Roman Catholics, the question of salvation, the possibility of salvation for non-Christians is settled at Vatican II. The document is Lumen Gentium number 16, in which the Council says that not only Catholics, non-Catholic Christians, believers, Hindus, <coughs> Buddhists, uh, those who uh, uh, look for God in shadows and images, but even those who do never mention God, even these, the last four groups, even these may be saved. Uh, but the Council clearly affirmed that they are saved through Christ. Yes, the possibility of salvation is through Christ. With regard to the second question, what is the role of the religions to which they belong? Do they have any role to play? If these Hindus, <laughs> Buddhists, atheists, and so forth are saved to Christ, what role, if any, should be given to Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and so forth? This is the second question that the Council refused to answer. They say the question is still much disputed. We are not yet ready to make any definitive <coughs> answer to the second question. On the first question, they felt true enough to say, yes, these may be saved, as long as they live according to what their culture tells them, what's good or bad, and so forth. But always through Christ. Always through Christ. That's clear in Vatican II. The second is, questions, what role, if any, should be assigned to these religions? Okay. It is the second question that I'd like to answer this, uh, today and uh, uh, propose some of the uh, question, uh, ways of looking at them. Uh, in my writings, I have tried to argue that um, non-Christian religions, to use this very negative description, non-Christian, you know, uh, non-Christian religions do have and do exercise a uh, salvific function in for the people who uh, practice their faith. The question is, how do you do that? The question is, how do you uh, relate this possibility? Um, yesterday, uh, just arrived yesterday, in my mail is an uh, article in Theological Studies, which is, of course, the Jesuit uh, uh, Journal of Theology. Uh, essay by David Coffey, uh, Australian, entitled A Trinitarian Response to Issues Raised by Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to have uh, detailed studies, somewhat negative, you can do it. Well, you know, when you write on something, you always have to be a little bit critical because it's kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know what exactly it's about. Um, my way of thinking is that we need to re restructure our approach to Christian theology. What do I mean by that? Basically, what we have so far in our theology of non-Christian religions is to approach from the perspective of Jesus. You started out with a very particular figure, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, if, you, I, if you want to use a kind of image, you have beginning, it's somehow very large perspective, universal perspective creation, Adam, Eve, and then narrow down to the people of God, Abraham and the patriarch, and you get narrow and now you get to the people of Israel. And then Christ is presented as the peak, as the center of the uh, 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 epitome, uh, as the peak. And from there, somehow it opens up again through the church, through universal, to the universal people of God and so on. And then, so you see there is a kind of bottleneck. You start very large and you get a very small, at one point, and then somehow you get, well, I have to be for, again, big again, and that includes all the people and so forth. Now suppose, instead of using that metaphor, instead of reading history that way, 
universal, particular, and then try to figure it out how it go out again with the uh, book of Acts mm -hmm. that we go out. Let's start thinking differently. Let's start thinking of Jesus not as the peak, not as the uh, culmination and the uh, fountain and everything else. Let's start from not from Jesus as center, but start from the Holy Spirit as the center. A new mythology. Instead of seeing Jesus as the particular, unifying all the personality in himself, let's see him as an instance of the universality of the role of the Spirit in history.